Hey Pixel viewers, welcome to Array 101. I'm going to show you what an array is, how to load data into it, and how to take data back out of it. So let's not waste any time and jump right into it. Alright, open up Flash and make a new ActionScript 3 document. Before we start to load in the XML into Flash, we need to understand what an array is and how to use it. Unlike basic variables, arrays can hold multiple values. For example, I want to make a grocery list. If I were to use string variables, I would have to create a unique variable each time. It would look something like this. And if I were to trace any of the variables, I would get the value of that string in my output panel. But arrays, on the other hand, you can add multiple values and access them by going to a specific index of that array. For example, I will set up an array of groceries and fill it with multiple values and then call a specific value. So here I am starting out with the var keyword and giving it a name of groceries. I am data typing it to array and then I equal that to a new array. Alright, in the parentheses is where we start adding the values to our array. Now I want to get to the first value of that array, so I trace my array with the index of zero. Be sure that the index is in square brackets. Notice in the output panel, you see the results of my trace statements. Array starts count from zero. So if you have three items in your array, then your third item's index is two, meaning item one has an index of zero, and then item two has an index of one, and item three has an index of two, and so on. Moving on, as you're shopping, you realize that you need two more items. You can add or subtract from an array very easily. To add to the end of the array, you use a push function, and to subtract one from the end of the array, you use a pop function. I realize I wanted crackers and soda, so I need to type groceries.push, open parentheses, close parentheses, and inside there it's open quote, close quote, and inside the quotes type in crackers. I'm going to trace the statement groceries to make sure everything worked. Good, it did. Now go to the next line and I will do the same thing to add soda to my list. Again, tracing groceries to make sure it works. Now that I put soda on the list, I realize I don't have enough money for that, so I want to take it off. So I will type groceries.pop and trace groceries again. And there you go, soda is off the list. But as I shop, I pick up items from the beginning of the list, so I want to take them out of the array. This calls for the splice function. This function is expecting two parameters. The first parameter is a starting index, the start point. And the second one is the delete count, how many items you want to take off. So I'm going to start with the index of zero, which is my first item, and delete two items. Now when I trace groceries, I'll notice that milk and bread are now gone from the list. Now, there are more methods allowing you to add, remove, rearrange, and revalue array nodes. But what we know for right now, more than enough. So next, let's get into actually loading XML into Flash. All right, now that we understand the basics of XMLs and arrays, we need to do one more thing before our slideshow can come to life. We need to load the XML into Flash and sort the data so we can work with it. Even though there are ways of writing XML in Flash, the most common way is to use XML as an externally loaded document. So let's begin. First, we need to set up a variable that will hold the XML data. Let's call that XML data and data type it to XML. Now we need a URL loader. So make a variable and call it XML loader and data type it to URL loader and equal that to a new URL loader. After this is set up, we need to make two functions, one that will load the XML on a successful load, and the other will be an I.O. error event that will catch a problem in the event that the XML is not properly loaded. So type XML loader dot add event listener, open parenthesis, event dot complete, comma, load the XML, close parenthesis. And on the next line, let's type XML loader dot add event listener open parenthesis IO error event dot IO error comma XML load error 
close parenthesis. Now we can set up the XML loader to load the external document. So let's type XML loader dot load, open parenthesis, new URL request, open parenthesis, open quote, slideshow dot XML, close quote, close parenthesis, and close parenthesis one more time. That sets up the basic calls for loading the document. Now we need to create the functions we're calling. Let's deal with the complete function first. So type function, load the XML, open parenthesis, EVT, colon, event, close parenthesis, colon, void. Since we won't be needing a return value here, that's what we're going to type. And then don't forget your open and close curly brackets. Inside that function, all I'm going to do is make a trace statement just to make sure everything's working properly. So type XML data equals new XML open parenthesis evt dot target dot data close parenthesis and on the very next line type in trace xml data before we can test we need to make the io error function all right now go outside that function and go a couple lines down and start typing out function xm xml load error open parenthesis evt colon io error event close parenthesis, colon void. Open and close curly brackets, and go inside there and start a new trace statement. And in quotes, say something is wrong, colon, and then outside the quotes, type in plus, space, and then evt.txt. Now is a good time to test. Hit control enter, and bam! In your output window, you see the XML document. Let's just see what happens when we have a problem loading the XML. For the new URL request, add an extra letter to the slideshow XML string. Hit Control Enter. And an error message pops up in the output window. This is telling us that we have a problem loading in, and the evt.txt is stating that it can't find XML document called slideshows. Fix that error, save it, and test again, and we're back to normal. And there you have it. You just loaded XML into Flash. Next, I'll show you how to take that data and add some cool transitional effects.